The biennial week-long Farnborough International Air Show commences today, which is a major event for the aerospace and defence industries, featuring a trade show for the first five days, so Monday to Friday, followed by a public display on Saturday and Sunday. Attendance over the course of the week can get into the couple of hundred thousand region, which is obviously rather more than would typically pass through the airport site in the course of the week, and therefore special capacity solutions are required to be deployed in order to enable a usable mobile experience. And so far, Vodafone has been the network to jump to that challenge with a couple of temporary sites which were first spotted by Jake when he was picking up Vodafone's Band 7 in his area which has not been deployed up until this point. Vodafone is well known as a provider for large enterprise and corporates so it is especially unsurprising that they're the ones to deploy at least at the time that we went out and explored an enormous amount of capacity to that area because a lot of the people especially at the trade show will almost certainly be on Vodafone as their business corporate network. So let's take a look at the temporary sites that Vodafone has deployed. Now they have two temporary sites across the site in order to optimally serve the large area the event happens in. Each of these temporary masts, also known as cells on wheels or cows, have two sets of antennas on them, so six antennas per temporary site. And broadcasting from each site through all these antennas is a variety of bands for 2G and 3G and 4G. Specifically in the case of Vodafone they have their 2G, 3G on 900MHz and then 4G on 800, 1800, 2100 and 2600MHz. The 2100 MHz is completely refarmed, and this means they have 50 MHz paired of 4G deployed on the temporary site, which is a lot of capacity. And actually, with the antennas that they're using, these aren't just three sector sites either. They have much more beams than that, which means actually even more capacity. Vodafone have even been so nice as to let O2 share the temporary site and O2 broadcast on the same frequency bands apart from 2600 MHz but their overall spectrum deployment for 4G is 25 MHz paired because their 2100 MHz spectrum is only 10 MHz as opposed to Vodafone's greater chunk of spectrum in that band and obviously O2 doesn't have the 20 paired 2600 that Vodafone has. In the screenshots I show the spectrum bands and it's possible to see that the downlink performance from the band 1 and band 7 when we visited was very good at over 200 megabits per second. However, of course, this was on Saturday, which is before the event started. So the main load on it there will be people setting up for the event, which will obviously be quite a bit lower than when it's in full swing. However, there's clearly quite a lot of headroom for increased demand there. Now let's look closer at these temporary sites. At the top of them are CCI antennas. CCI's antennas are commonly only seen in the UK on temporary sites, where their multi-beam products rule the roost as far as delivering a high capacity temporary solution for an event. And that is kind of how they used in the case of Farnborough International Airshow. So the top CCI antennas have two beams of high band each so they have two 33 degree beams coming from each antenna for the high band so 1800 2100 and 2600 megahertz and they also have one much wider beam for the low band the low band could be used for either the 4g 800 megahertz or the 2g 3g 900 megahertz dependent on which, on what is broadcast on the antennas below the lower antennas are fairly standard comscope triple band antennas with four high ports and two low ports and these just broadcast the standard relatively wide beam that you'd find on a typical macro site and these will just be carrying the other low band that the higher CCI antennas 
are not broadcasting. So if the higher CCI ones are doing, say, 4G 800, these will be doing the 2G, 3G, 900 megahertz, for example. Also, a point of note is that the antennas on these temporary sites are quite noticeably down tilted, and that will be because these are designed to provide coverage and capacity to a specific area rather than targeting the broad coverage. Because, like I say, this area does have coverage from macro sites around the airport ready, and therefore, in order to prevent excessive overlap and for signal optimization purposes, they have down tilted the antennas to ensure optimal performance for the air show as well as around the surroundings, which could otherwise be impacted if the antennas were not tilted appropriately. Obviously, with all of this capacity for customers, the masts have to have a significant amount of connectivity back to Vodafone's network, and they do this through point-to-point -point microwave link onto a nearby macro site, which is Enode B4400, which is a site with 4x4, L21 and LOA, and then the usual UG09 as well. And this site is fiber fed, so it's probably got about a 10 gigabit link to back to Vodafone's core network and therefore has sufficient capacity to deal with the temporary sites as well as the usual traffic that the macro site would face on its own. Thanks for watching this video about the Farnborough Air Show masts. I will probably do a follow up on Saturday or Sunday this week towards the end of the air show once we've tested around to see what the performance of all the networks are and see how well these have performed. Certainly if EE and 3 have not deployed any temporary sites by the time that especially the public show happens, it will be interesting to see how they perform.